What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna learn how to set up a hybrid Conda and PipTools environment for machine learning. The basic idea is to, our objective today is to start from nothing and finish with a folder containing some basic machine learning code and the entire environment setup configured from start to finish. So the first step is to create a Conda environment and we'll specify the Python version. So let's go ahead and we're gonna create an environment. So we'll go, Conda create minus n, and then the name of this environment is the setup ml env. All right, and I will specify a Python version to be uh, Python 3.7. All right, so uh, once we've done that, say yes. So the first step, first step is done. Now the second step is to we're going to now we'll activate our, uh, our environment. Perfect. Now that we have activated the environment, we can go to step three, which is to install the right CUDA tool for our PyTorch environment. In this case, I decided to do a machine learning example using PyTorch, but uh, we, it would work the same for TensorFlow. The only thing is that we will have to install different packages. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to install uh, now that we have, uh, instead of installing, so now the third step is to install the right CUDA tool for our PyTorch environment. Now, in this example, I'm going to be using PyTorch code, but for TensorFlow, it the, the setup will be very similar. The only thing that differs is the installation of the TensorFlow packages and instead of the PyTorch packages. But in this case, we're not going to install PyTorch right now. We're going to first install the CUDA tool that I need. So in my case, I'm going to install the CUDA toolkit 10.2 because it's the, the version that is compatible with my uh, with my machine. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I'm going to do here. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to just go on install CUDA toolkit 10.2. Perfect. Now I'm installing CUDA toolkit. Perfect. Now that I've done that, step number four is to export the environment to an environment.yml file. So we can do that with conda and export. And then we're going to say from history so that it doesn't export a lot of things that are, um, that are not. We're going to say conda and export from history so that we just uh, export to this environment.yml file uh what we have installed so far which is in this case the python version and the cuda toolkit and then we say in environment dot yml file perfect now to check we can just come here and we can we can look up our file and we can see here that we have in the environment.yml file, the CUDA toolkit and the Python uh, and the Python version. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Now we can go back to our terminal and go to step number five, which is to create the re requirements folder. Now we can go to step number five, which is to create the requirements folder with the necessary .in files. Now these .in files are files that will create so that they can work with a tool we'll use, which is called pip tools. And this tool is amazing because it allows you to keep, uh, to, it allows you to compile a automatically a requirements.txt file from a set of simple dependencies that will, as humans will manually input. And it can allow us to keep uh, mutually compatible versions of packages in the development code and the production code and so that we don't have to take care of looking up dependencies for packages we want to install to make sure that we don't run into conflicts and issues with compatibility. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to create a folder called requirements. Uh, And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder called requirements. And inside that folder, we're going to create a file called dev.in. 
and another file called prod.in. Perfect. Uh, the prod.in file will keep the dependencies for the actual uh, production code, let's call it the, the, the main source code, the stuff that's going to go to deployment, and the dev.in file is going to uh, is going to have the development packages, the packages that we are using to develop our source code and to develop our project. All right. So now that we have created this file and now what we're going to do is we're going to put the dependencies in these files. So in this case, I'm going to go to my prod.m file. And in here, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, since I want to do a project with PyTorch, the dependencies I'm going to need are torch, Torch vision, uh, numpy, and pill, and pillow, right? And in the dev, now I can go to the dev.in file. Let's say we wanted to add a visualization, so we're going to put like wallet, map wallet, for example, right? And we're going to we're, we're going to put it right here, and at the top of this dev. Uh, at the top of this dev.in file, we're going to put a command saying minus c prod.txt. What this is doing is constraining the development packages to the production packages to make sure they're mutually compatible. This is a great way to make sure they're keeping everything consistent. And this line is constraining the development. So now what I can do is instead of compiling and generating the uh, uh, corresponding dev.txt file and prod.txt files. Now, what I'll do is I will write a make file because I just don't want to do this once or right now, but I want to have a make file so I can update things as I go uh, automatically and as easily as possible. Inside this make file, we'll have three basic commands. We'll have a help command and that will print the make file commands that we have. We'll have a conda update command to update our environment. And we'll have a pip tools command to install, compile, and sync our dependency requirements in both development and production environments. It's important to note that, um, so for our make file, I already have one set up. So I will just copy from my example environment. So I'll copy the make file here. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is the make file that we have. The R, uh, so the first command. Here, we're printing all the commands that we have inside this make file. This is actually was taken from this stack overflow response. So these, the first three line, the, the first line here is printing the make file commands. Now, instead of going through this entire command, since I didn't write it, uh, this was actually taken from the stack overflow answer. I, since I'm going to leave a GitHub repo that you can uh, access and see the make file, you can reveal this command for yourself. But basically here, we're printing all the commands inside the make file. Uh, next, we're gonna, we're gonna set up, uh, we're gonna set up conda update. Uh, next, we're gonna set up the conda update command. So the conda update command does two things. Uh, the, um, yeah, the conda update command does two things. First, it, uh, it does an update to our environment, right, with the conda env update. And um, uh, it, it does an update in our environment from the .yml file that we have. And then it uh, prints out a warning so that we activate the environment that we created. And the second command, and the, and the third command is the pip tools command, which compiles and installs the exact pip packages uh, that we need from the files that we created. In this case, prod.in and dev.in, right? And finally, it uses the pip sync command to install uh, the dependencies from these two packages, from these two requirements files, uh, from these two requirement files at the same time, which is great because now we know that uh, working with dependency packages that uh, we can actually install the dependency packages from two different requirements files 
and they will work inside the same environment because of this awesome uh, pip tools uh, because of the awesome pip tools package so these two super powerful commands really help us out it's important to note that what i'm reproducing here is an updated version of the lab setup from the full stack deep learning course which is one of the best practical deep learning courses out there to learn how to do machine learning for industry and they teach all the practical aspects of how to set up not only how to set up environments but how to develop code train do experiment tracking data management all that good stuff and i definitely recommend you check them out and i'll leave a link to the description to their course that's about it with the make file now we can follow up to uh, step number seven, which is to run make conda update. So we can quickly, uh, let's uh, just be um, uh, pedagogical. Let's deactivate, uh, we'll deactivate our, uh, our environment, right? So now we're going to run uh, make conda update. So perfect. And now we can activate. My environment now this is just the uh, this is just to be thorough with you know how we're setting this up uh perfect uh we can check on that environment.yml file so that you can see it's you know, looking good so perfect this is the environment.yml file and now we can run make pip tools and it will install all the packages in the .m files and take care of any potential conflicts that might exist. Now we can do that with uh, now we can do that with make pip tools. And now we're installing all the necessary packages for this project. So now what we can observe is that we should have the uh, dependency files generated. So as you can see here, there's a file called dev.txt and dev.txt has all the dependencies uh, that we need and it was compiled automatically, which is awesome. And the same thing for production, right? And that's pretty much it. This is how you set up uh, properly. And that's pretty much it. That's how you set up properly a development of uh, and that's pretty much it. That's how you set up a hybrid Conda and BIPTOOLS environment to work in machine learning and make sure that the development code that you have is compatible with the stuff that you have uh, in production. So as you develop your application or your machine learning model or whatever, you're always uh, just updating uh, these files with a simple uh, make uh, Conda update and make BIPTOOLS commands and you're always uh, you're always sure that you're developing uh, you're developing your environment your environment is consistent will be consistent across uh, machines and a really nice feature of this is that by having these two files and using pip tools you can make sure that you know uh, your project will work in machines that don't accept conda for example so thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time Cheers.